Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by US Gamers Nadia Oxford and Ted Wieson to give our post-review thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Shield. We'll be splitting this into two parts, with this first part being spoiler-free and following the embargo, while part two will take a deep dive into the game. So, let's get started. All right, guys, so uh, the review embargo uh, ended yesterday, and uh, all the reviews are out. People were finally talking about the game in a review sense rather than just speculation. Of course, the game isn't actually out yet, so we're going to be still following the embargo. We can't go hog wild on everything. So uh, basically, we can talk about most everything leading up to uh, the fourth gym, but of course, we can't talk about the new Pokemon that they haven't revealed themselves and stuff like that. So we're kind of limited in what we can actually talk about here, but I think we can still give our general thoughts. And just right off the bat, Nadia, how did you feel about Pokemon Sword and Shield? Uh, Generally, I I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't write a full review at the time. In fact, by the time this podcast goes up, it probably won't be up either because I'm probably saving it for Monday uh, on US Gamer. Uh, I really want to try the game with the servers on and see what it's like to interact with the wild area when the servers are on. But as a single player experience, uh, I wound up enjoying myself quite a bit. Uh, I will say, and I did say in my impressions, that I feel like Game Freak could have made it more of a, a quote-unquote next-gen experience. Like, you kind of compare uh, Fire Emblem Awakening on the 3DS to Fire Emblem Three Houses on the on the Switch, and you definitely see that big uh, generation jump in terms of content, and Pokemon doesn't really have that kind of jump. But it has, like, a good... Pokemon Adventure at its core, I think it has a a lot of warmth. Um, I really like the Gala region because I think that fighting in stadiums and the atmosphere that comes with it is is a lot of fun. Ted, what did you feel about the uh, game? Just we have a baseline for everybody. (laughs) So, (laughs) oh boy. (laughs) I did not end up liking the game pretty much at all. Now, there's, there's a number of reasons for that, but I ultimately just found it to be a really bare bones experience i think is the best way to put it there just wasn't a lot to the game at all was my big problem i mean i have some more subjective complaints that you know just pop down to my personal taste but all things considered my biggest issues with the game were just that it felt like a lot of the time the game played itself i could hold forward and not have to do not have to think about how i traverse through areas i didn't have to do any real strategizing in terms of the in terms of the battles most of the time it was and i mean granted that's something a lot of people say about pokemon in general but i feel like that's somewhat of an unearned criticism because a lot of these games are a lot more a lot more complex than I think people often give them credit for. So the it just, to me, felt like there wasn't much substance, and the substance that was there was worse than what we've seen previously. And, I mean, again, like, there's other things, like I didn't like a lot of the new Pokemon designs or the music. Didn't like the music? No, I did it. I know, I know, that's, I know that's something that a lot of people aren't going to agree with me about and and i understand that i will say that the wild battle theme is not my favorite but i really love the gym theme in this one the gym theme's all right it's not my favorite though i i like what they did with the music especially for a lot of the battles because they have that cheering in there it really does emphasize the whole stadium aspect and i agree with nadia that having the gym battles take place in this huge field uh, with uh, the, these Pokemon battles going on and the Dynamax sort of emphasizing it. It really does feel like an event each time. There's a sense of, as I said in my review, a sense of grandeur with a lot of the events that take place. And uh, you really feel like you're going through this giant league rather than just, yeah, this is just something kids do. It's it's no big deal. We can try to yeah. do it. But it's it never felt as emphasized as it was here and there's there's a lot of fun details like they have the pokeball man mascot which is oh, <laughs> oh, oh but he's so creepy he's he's, he's, great. he's so creepy though <laughs> he, he's creepy oh, he's like the, the, he's creepy as a mascot that going around but they do have billboards on the back on the background like if you knock out a pokemon they have a little animation of him like fainting and stuff yes, like that yes yes it's uh, your mate ball guy yeah it's your mate ball guy <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's a little weird. He gives out new Pokeballs and stuff like that. And it's it's like, okay, that's that's 
neat, but there's there's a, there's a great sense of fun. I like how much the whole gym challenge has been been emphasized in this one. Uh, and that really carried me forward through a, a, a lot of the game, early game, where I was just like, this is really cool. I, I like the new Pokemon that I'm encountering. There's tons of new ones as I'm going around. Like, I think there was six new ones that I had never seen before leading up to the game, where they were just like, okay, we never yeah. revealed these. Here they are. It's like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I think, like, Route 1 was almost entirely, if not all, just new Pokemon. And, uh, of course, you're seeing a bunch of Pokemon that Game Freak hadn't introduced yet. And uh, that was, I think that was really exciting too, just getting to see all the new Pokemon and I hadn't spoiled myself, so getting to see them fresh. Also looking forward to like, you know, evolutions and stuff like that, because that's all information that you didn't know. And uh, so that this is like the first time in a while that I really felt, you know, kind of a, that anticipation for, mm -hmm. for Pokemon. I, I will agree that, that it was really nice to start a game and see new Pokemon that hadn't been, you know, revealed, because that was one of the big issues leading up to Sun and Moon, and I, I mm -hmm. love Sun and Moon, just for clarification, like, Sun and Moon is one of my favorite. Pokemon yeah, Sun and Moon is one of my favorites, too, I loved mm -hmm. it. Agreed. Um, although I didn't like the plot changes in Ultra, but that's getting, that's getting off track. That's something but, else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, one of the big things about Sun and Moon is they showed off, like, all but, like, what, two of the new Pokemon? Yeah, they before just tipped their release. hands. Yeah, which was really frustrating because you just there wasn't a lot of new stuff being shown throughout the game which you know was it was it was annoying because it felt like a lot of the mystique is done was gone yeah. and a lot of the cool thing about pokemon is you know figuring is like seeing oh what is this what's in this route like that's a lot of the the appeal of the series so i did i did appreciate that at the very least at the beginning you saw like at least a dozen new Pokemon that hadn't been shown in trailers within like the first half hour. Yeah, which was mm -hmm. really cool. It's it was a really nice step. I'm very appreciative to Pokemon that they to the Game Freak and Pokemon Company for keeping it under wraps like that. It just sucks that it got leaked because well, Pokemon always has to get leaked. It just seems yeah. like a rule at this point. I it, feel bad for them because they really tried. They tried so hard to keep everything under wraps. Like we haven't seen the evolutions of the starters, and I was really surprised at that. And I was. So I was looking forward to seeing what they looked like uh, when I played the game. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I did wait. Yeah, I, I am too. And I'll, just talking about the stories, of course, we can't talk specifics. Yeah. But I ended up liking all three starters, Final Evolutions. I, I do think uh, Grookey has the weakest middle evolution. But, yes. <laughs> but overall, I, I did like the designs and the theming for all three. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to talking about that one, in the, I guess, in the spoiler cast. Mm-hmm. I do like Sobble's middle form, I will say. I like, that's actually probably my favorite of his evolution trio, but... Um, I just kind of take it as like a, a personality journey he undergoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sort it's of a, how I was feeling. It's a strange personality journey. It is, but I, I love it. <laughs> it really is, but it's like, you know what, I can I can kind of buy this. I'll, I'm, I'm down for this. Uh Score Bunny is, is very consistent all throughout, and uh, I'd say kind of the same for Grookey. Uh, he definitely has those awkward teenage years. <laughs> he does. He does. But he comes out all right on top. Yeah, he does. He's just like, all right, I'm, I know what I'm all about. <laughs> <laughs> I think the coloring on a lot of the Pokemon can feel a little weird the first time you see them. Like, I'll be like, oh, that's an interesting color choice. I'm not quite sure about that. But others, I saw them immediately. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for this. I like this Pokemon. I'm I'm all good. Uh, real quick, how'd you guys feel about all the new Galar forms? On one hand, I do... I appreciate a couple of different things about them. Like, I like that they did take a lot of liberties with them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate that risk, because for many of the Alola forms for Pokemon, it kind of felt like a lot of them were just like, oh, this is a different color. Yeah, yeah, like Vulpix. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I appreciate that they went more wild with the Galar forms. It's just, again, a lot of the changes I really didn't... I felt like they went too far <laughs> pretty much is the is the big thing again i'm also the person who likes the ice cream cone pokemon so maybe i'm a bit of a hypocrite <laughs> yes <Who knows>? representation <laughs> for vanillux yes yeah i will say one of the things about the embargo is we're not allowed to talk about how to evolve a lot of the pokemon uh -huh. but that doesn't really matter because i couldn't figure it out for like <laughs> it felt like half the decks yeah i did context. hear some complaints uh in that regard but um i will say 
Uh, I can't say which Pokemon it is, but I do like the way the Galar, Galarian forms kind of turn certain Pokemon on their head. Like, there's a certain cursed Pokemon, I won't say which one, uh, or rather a Pokemon that curses people in the other regions, but it itself is cursed in the Galar region. Mm-hmm. And you probably know which one I'm talking about. I just think that's yeah. a really, a really neat twist and the way, like, and the way it looks, like, I'll get more into it in the, in the spoiler cast, but um, it really does look cursed. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is for my sins, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I but must. otherwise, I, I I mostly enjoy the Galarian forms uh, quite a bit. And um, I'm trying to remember, like, if I adopted any in particular. Uh, I absolutely love Galarian Ponyta. I think mm-hmm. that's amazing. And I'm so mad that I didn't have Shield just because of Galarian Ponyta. What did mm. Sword get? Uh, uh, we got Surfetched. We oh, you got Surfetched. All right. Yeah. Which yeah. I did and, have um, my team, and I did really enjoy. <laughs> like he is a beast. Yeah, uh, he's like a fighting type, isn't he? Or yeah, he's a fighting type, but he also gets a lot of different moves. Like I, I had a different move, all physical based by the end, and he was just he was a powerhouse. <laughs> it was great, and he had, he came equipped with this leak that increased his critical hit ratio. He was he was one of my best, so I was like I'm all for uh, Surfage just being this boss of a Pokemon and uh, really enjoying it. And I ended up with another ga- uh, Galar form on my team that I didn't expect. Uh, <laughs> this thing when I first saw it, I'm like really that's that's didn't expect that. It- but uh, let's talk about stuff that we can actually openly talk about <laughs> than just sort of curve <laughs> Seems around fair. it. Seems fair, yeah. Um, so, Nadia, you, you ended up actually liking Galar as a region. Right. What, what, what about it uh, really appealed to you? Uh, well, I have, like, family from that part of the world. Not Galar, but, like, you know, kind of <laughs> Ireland, UK region. I've never gotten to visit. I always wanted to visit, so I've always had a certain affection for uh, just stuff like Watership Down and what have you, the Rolling Hills, so I really enjoyed kind of stepping out of my house in Pokemon Sword and Shield and seeing like that, getting to kind of run down a hill to go to the professor's house, I thought that was really cool. Uh, I already mentioned the stadium, and one thing we uh, neglected to mention is that as you fight, the more you fight, uh, the more excited the crowd gets, like the, the music becomes more and more pumped up, so I just really like that kind of football uh, excitement, uh, minus the riots and what have you. Uh, that would be really something else if, like, the Gala region, like, erupted into riots during Pokemon battles. Can you imagine? Oh, that'd be so good. Uh, <laughs> like DLC, DLC. Come yeah. on, let's do it. <laughs> but uh, I've always had, like, an affection for, you know, just, like, swords and shield and Stonehenge and medieval knights and whatnot. And it's actually funny when uh, I was reading the... Someone did a preview of uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield before it came out. I think it was Eurogamer. And they're talking about how, like, oh... Yeah, it's kind of kind of neat. Like you know, remember when you would take like field trips to Stonehenge and whatever? And I'm like, you're talking about taking field trips to Stonehenge. When I was a kid, we went to like made like maple syrup in the back of the school, and you guys <laughs> went to like ancient ruins, and you're just acting so casual about it. Like, damn. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's my thoughts on the matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I enjoyed the region. I think it looks really beautiful there's some great designs here between all the cities like they they're all very unique between you know the, the steam or the castle or yes. the the london equivalent uh i think the fairy town looks gorgeous um the biggest problem i had as i went on is that a lot of it is very surface level in my opinion it's um like this is a really cool looking city but there's not a lot to do within that city uh, like the Steam City, I was like, I was kind of shocked how quickly I explored it all. I was even more shocked with the Castle City, because it really is like, it was like, oh, cool, we're gonna get it going. These all these parapets, we have this like school setting that'd be kind of cool to go into and see what it's, what it's like. And no, it's just a front wall that you can go into a few buildings, and you can't even enter that school like building that I uh, that you see. Yeah, I saw that building. I wonder, I was wondering about that. Like, and I, I do agree with you on that. I feel like th- this is generally a problem with Pokemon. And I feel like that's one place where Game Freak really could have broken out. It felt like Disney World, actually. <laughs> the thing I was thinking where, okay, yeah, you've got these facades that look like a, a city, but it's just ultimately like one street. Right. Like the, the last city that you uh-huh. go into, for example, like it certainly is trying to look big for sure, but ultimately you can see everything you have to do in it in... 15 10 minutes, minutes yeah, 10, maybe, 15 minutes. maybe. And I feel like that's also a problem that extends to the rest of the game. Because 
I felt like there was not anything to do in any of the routes either. Like, I felt like every time I went to a new route, I was walking in a straight line. Maybe there was a branch in the path that led to an item or whatever. But other than that, though, there there just wasn't any exploration to to any of it. And again, this is something where I think like a lot of the older games actually did do a really good job. See, to me, it was just like standard Pokemon exploration, uh, minus the the wild area. It's like I just uh, that's why I kind of called it. Okay, well, this is a standard Pokemon, and that's fine. Like, I guess a good example would be the the first real dungeon in Pokemon Red and Blue, I guess, would be Viridian Forest. Yeah. You know, and in Viridian Forest, you know, you can, there's actually a relatively large amount of area to explore at the very beginning. And, you know, granted, it is relatively basic in the grand scheme of things, but there are ultimately choices that you have mm -hmm. to make when you're exploring versus something like the first dungeon, the mine in uh, Galar, where... It literally is a Final Fantasy thirteen dungeon. You walk straight. <laughs> they have the they, they have the, the, the literal minecart tracks pointing you in the right direction. And occasionally you can go left or right, find an item, and walk back. It's never been this mindless to me before. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on as far as the dungeons are concerned. The, the routes you you look back and you like I I can think of a very long stretch of road in Gen 1 where it's just nothing but trainers as you're going along a Oh, that, oh, God, oh the, that. the going south from Lavender to Fuchsia sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think everybody agrees on uh, that. And <laughs> it's terrible. And then there are far less trainers to fight in this game. There are surprisingly few trainers per route. Um, yeah, now that you mention it, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. It's I, I, I think it's balancing for the experience share. Right. But uh, yeah, real quick before we, before we touch on the experience share, uh, with the gen with the dungeons and caves and stuff like that, there really wasn't anything to really see. I think we got two caves and a forest to really explore, and they had some you know twisty turny things uh, at least with the forest. But the forest is neat, yeah. Yeah, it was nice to explore that. But the caves, they were very much just very simple, uh, straightforward affairs and. Uh, like I pointed this out in my review, but they give you the escape rope and they make it an infinite item. You no longer have to buy them. That's a really cool addition. Yeah, I like nice. that that they did that. I never used it. <laughs> there was never yeah. a need to. <laughs> Neither did I. So thanks, but how about give us an actual dungeon or something to do? Like Mount Moon to me is the big first exploration bit where you're trying to figure uh, out yeah. how to go around yeah. and push rocks and get through that area. That felt like a major event to me. Uh, when I first played Pokemon, and they've had caves like that uh, as you go along, and they like block pushing puzzles, or even just you know you go to the big event at the end of the game, and I'm gonna get, keep it very vague for this. Oh, I know what you're talking but about. But you have this yeah. big thing, and you're like, oh, cool, we're finally gonna get like an equivalent to the rocket hideout where we have to explore. Nope, it is a straight shot to the guy, yeah. and then move on to the next bit, and there is nothing in between. Nadia, I, I, real quick going back to that, I, I'm curious what you thought of the new experience share, the required experience share, Nadia. Uh, I am curious, like, I had it on the whole time just to get that out of the way, but mm -hmm. I am curious... I don't think you can turn it yeah, off. Yeah, it's impossible No, you to can't turn it off. Turn it off. That's, I'm a little curious about that. It's like, you can access your box from anywhere, which is really, really nice, so if you just want to put your Pokemon away, that's that's fine. The experience share doesn't matter anymore, but, like, why not just let people turn it off? I understand why people were a little bit angry about that. It's not really something that bothers me particularly yeah like be, but it is it is strange that it's not an op option considering that it was an option before exactly mm -hmm. it feels like to me it's because the game is specifically balanced around that experience share because uh, hmm. otherwise i think you'll have to do a lot more wild pokemon grinding without it uh it'd be almost a necessity at that point because again there are so few trainers to battle and you really can't rebattle them uh, not until like post game that you can take on a few trainers again. Um, so it's it's an odd thing, but I also didn't like. It. I think they balanced it enough that I felt like it was not as intrusive as past ones because it really felt like the first time they did that whole experience share amongst your entire team. I that I couldn't like I was barely using my team I was using two of them out of the six I'm like this doesn't feel right I want to use my yeah. entire team and I didn't get that same quite feeling in Galar with Gen 8 
Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, especially since um, I feel like the wild area makes it very easy to level up your Pokemon. Like, they have those very strong Pokemon uh, that you can uh, take on even if you can't catch them. You have, like, the Dynamax Pokemon, which the low-level ones, uh, you can't. we can't really experience what the Dynamax raids are all about until the servers come on, but until then, uh, Game Freak will give you, like, these rando Pokemon trainers to help you out. And you can get some really good prizes from doing those raids, uh, mm -hmm. and even like the simple ones you can take down easily enough. I will say the post-game uh, Dynamax raids, forget it until you ha <laughs> in until you can play exactly. with real people and not like some toddler and his mud bray. It's so I didn't personally find them. To I did a couple of uh, post-game Max raids yesterday, and I didn't personally find them too challenging, but they were really tedious. It was nice that. The gym fights, at the very least, required strategy that you don't normally see in a Pokemon game. I did like that aspect mm. of it. I would often lose a Pokemon or two during the gym battles, uh, just because. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, they Dynamax, and you don't have the, quite the right Pokemon re uh, ready, or it's not uh, quite set up for you, and they can really hammer hammer in on you and give you some trouble. I played it against it in, a de in the demo at E3, and it still caught me off guard here with how quick. Uh, Nessa's um, Dreadnall is. Yeah, it says you would you would think a turtle, uh, but then again, I, I learned recently that uh, snapping turtles can can really book it when they want to, and I think that's what Dreadnall is based on. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it, it caught me off guard, and I never, I don't think I ever got close to losing any of them, not off the top of my head, but it was still like caught me off guard with just how much uh, they actually did give me crap, and and as Ted was saying, some of them do have more advanced strategies than that, or yeah. fun little things like the the fifth gym has. I think it's a funny little thing, like pretend. Potentially uh, increase or decrease your uh, uh, give you good buffs or debuffs oh, uh, depending yes. on how, what you do. And I'm not going to go. I don't want to go too much detail about that. But I think it's really a, a neat idea and a fun idea. That for was gyms. pretty funny. I have to say, I, I like that that whole. That was gym one of the better much. gags in the game. I do agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say that the last trainer um, gave me a bit of a gave me a bit of a fight because they really like to exploit weather. Mm -hmm. And usually, like, weather is just, like, window dressing for a lot of these uh, trainer battles. But, no, they were using it to their full advantage, and it had me on the ropes at a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of what I... I guess what I'm trying to talk about is, is that that's kind of more what I kind of expected in terms of the, the fighting in the game. I mean, Pokemon, I don't think, should ever be a hard game. Yeah. Ultimately, this is a game made for children. And, you know, if you make it too hard, then... <laughs> You're just going to make a bunch of six-year-olds upset, which is <laughs> you don't want. An I don't. I don't want to be. The, I don't want to be the one who makes a six-year-old cry. But at the same uh -huh. time, I think that kids are smarter than we give them credit for, and uh -huh. I think that the gym battles, at the very least, do a lot. That yeah, it's it's doable. If you know Pokemon, you won't have that much trouble. Right. But at the same time, it's not going to give the game. It's not going to give the victory straight to you. You know, you might mm -hmm. lose a Pokemon or two. What did you guys think of the, uh, the gym trials? Because I actually kind of like the idea of them carrying over the island trials from Sun and Moon and just recontextualizing them for the lead up to the uh, actual gym leader fight. Um, and not all of them, I wouldn't call all of them amazing or anything like that, but I did appreciate the variety going into it. Yeah, uh, I appreciated the the variety going into it. And particularly, I think it's Milo who has the, the wooloos that you have to roll around, <laughs> and you have like the depending on how you do, uh, a yamper might help you herd them. I thought that was really cute and clever. Mm -hmm. That one was cute. I do agree there. I think the fourth gym was like, well, that's different for a Pokemon game. What was the fourth gym? Pachinko, basically. <laughs> Oh, that, oh was a, that was a thing, wasn't it? Uh, that was interesting. Like, it wasn't uh, difficult, but I like the idea of it just being this weird thing that you did. Did you? So you ultimately had a good time with them, right, Nadia? Yeah, like uh, I do agree that there were a couple where it was like, okay, you're just fighting, you know, some regular trainers. It's the same old, same old. I actually did like. I think Nessa's gym was probably one of my least favorites, just because I liked the fact that the other gym changed it up a bit more, and uh, Nessa's was more of the traditional puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I also just hate the kind of puzzles where like you turn off one thing and two more things come on and I'm, not, I'm not very good at braining yeah it's like oh, i have to use my head oh that sucks <laughs> <laughs> it's just water can't i go past it yeah exactly it's, it's not going down that hard it's fine <laughs> not gonna get washed away <laughs> 
Um, I'm trying to think what else we can talk about without going too much into spoilers, um, but I, I guess let's end it off with the wild area before we dive into the real spoiler stuff uh, for, for Sword and Shield. And what did you guys think of the wild area ultimately? And again, we'll start with you, Nadia. Um, I've actually, I think I've, one of the reasons I've put more time into this Pokemon versus any other Pokemon to date is because I actually do like exploring the wild area. At first, it seems kind of flat and featureless, and you're like, okay, great, sure, why not? But then, as you explore it more, you find more interesting nooks and crannies. Uh, it's not exactly like a level of exploration you'll see with like Breath of the Wild. And one thing I did note that I'm really disappointed in is that uh, you can't ride your Pokemon across this wild area. I think that would be so amazing, the way you could ride them in, in Let's Go. And instead, you get like a bike, and the bike's fine. I like the fact that it jumps like straight from land to sea without a hitch, but it, it kind of takes away the personality. Um, I do really like camping. At first I didn't like it very much, but then as I cooked more curry and earned more, like, the more you earn on your curry decks, the more toys you get. Oh, is and, that how uh, that works? Doesn't bother that's how you get more toys, much. yeah. Oh, okay. You see, because I actually did not like the curry and camping at all is the thing. Like, do you ever unlock a toy that's not the ball or the shaky thing? Uh, you get like different kinds of balls. Like a, you get like a soothe ball that I like. That's really good for making your Pokemon friendly towards you. Uh, but there's not like a different variety of toy at all. I, I haven't found one yet, but there is like something like 200 curries you can cook. So I haven't exactly found them all. <laughs> yeah. okay. I, I, well, I just uh, sit down and actually start making a bunch of curry just to figure out the entire curry decks. Uh, because the the thing for me is is that one the curry mini game gets very repetitive because it's the same thing every single time. Like it's a pretty basic cooking mama kind of mini game where you mash the A button and then you rotate the control stick and then that's it. There's not really any variety to it. And again, I would be more into it if there were, you know, if the maybe you had to prepare the starting ingredient a different way or something like I would Well, be... also like the the how you well you cook it like if you burn it or if you like make well, it spill. Like that's the more the better you cook this curry, the more your pokemon will get out of it. The more they'll like well, you, the more experience they gain. Yeah, but the the thing is, is that I've had a, I had an issue where I had a time where because you can cook curry with uh, campers that you walk around and find on the different routes. Yes, I found one where there were four people there, including myself, and we were cooking this curry. Uh, we ended up fanning the flame so hot that the thing was smoking. <laughs> and, like, the Pokemon all had the sad faces and the little sad yeah, emoticons on them. And then I ended up stirring it too fast, and I spilled a bunch of it. And we all threw the heart in at the end at the wrong time. But the Pokemon, <laughs> it was still, the thing is, it was still a grade, grade like, the highest rank curry that it could possibly be just Wait. because we used the right ingredients oh really it really, I've, not, really, I've not gotten it, the highest rank at all yet i, best, I haven't gotten it either best i got was I, i've gotten bronze it's, i think it's really easy you just have to throw in as many ber berries as you possibly oh really can. is that what it comes i, I was very that's berries. all you have to do and yeah. not to mention that since the curry can completely fill your team pp uh status even reviving from faint in HP, it, it I didn't even feel like I needed to walk back to the Pokemon Center. Yeah, that's pretty handy. At any point, mm -hmm. every Pokemon pretty much reacts to the toys in the same way. If you throw the ball to the Pokemon once and you see how they pick it up and walk it back, it's the same thing every time. And same thing with the with the shaky thing. And it's not like like you can watch your Pokemon walk around in the camping scene as well, but they don't really do much. They like walk. And sometimes they'll stand next to each other, and like little emoticons will appear over their head. A couple of them, I started fighting. You started fighting? Okay, yeah. I did not see. I did not see that. It's, but... It sounds like, based on Nadia, the more you put in, the better, the more you'll get out. And I think yeah, that's it's definitely. Um, I do agree that I, there could be more. Like uh, one thing I mentioned in my uh, impressions is, I really like the hideouts in Sinnoh region and Hoenn region, and the fact that you could decorate them. And I feel like if you had something a little. Um, it wouldn't be exactly be like scientifically accurate to say, okay, I want to carry around a campsite that has flowers and everything like that, but it would be fun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just having like this furniture you'd put down every time. So yeah, I do agree there could be more to camping, but there is more to it than I originally thought, and I wound up having a pretty good time with it. I guess the big problem is is that from what you're telling me, you have to do the mini game, the curry mini game a lot, mm -hmm. and I just I found it super repetitive, well, and I don't. Did you know bother with coffins much? N no, because I liked I I liked having the bottom screen of my DS be 
invisible. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't want to. Yeah. yeah, at least you don't have to worry about it's, that with. Uh, also, the the Poffin mini game was also much shorter than the Curry mini game too. Is also the thing. Like you cook a Poffin in a matter of a minute, and it takes like two or three to cook the the Curry. Didn't feel that long. I will but... say, I will say that uh, if you didn't notice, the trainers that you meet, you can talk to their Pokemon and see their names. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I was, was mentioning, cute. yeah, is that. Once the servers go up, we're going to meet a whole bunch of Pikachus named like Weed Vegeta sixty nine and stuff like that. And <laughs> is what humanity deserves. Yeah, it's 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 about time. We, this is something we've needed for a long time. <laughs> they won't even put. They, they won't even let you see nicknames in Pokemon Go. I'm surprised because you can turn off the option. I guess so, like because if you don't want to see like Pokemon named like you know Fu or whatever, because mm-hmm. uh, people always find ways to get through the sensor filter. But I'm going to keep them on. I'm going to I'm going to subject myself to this pain. Yeah, I actually liked a lot of the options I had available. Like I I don't nickname my Pokemon the first time I play through a gen, so I can learn the new names. And the having the option of like uh, ask it asking you, do you want to nickname this Pokemon? You can just automatically say nope, never don't ask me that, and it'll be good to go. There's a lot a lot yeah. of really good options in here and quality of life updates. I will I I agree. I will say that it's really weird to have the sound options tied to a key item that you can very easily miss uh, yeah that like, was a strange choice someone was saying like uh I, I i remember meeting that guy and i didn't think twice about it because i usually don't screw around with my sound options that much but uh number one that's weird number two when another person who was leaking stuff brought that up someone else said no that's fake that's not true and it's uh, it is that part is very much there has okay. been a lot of weird misinformation going on around yeah it's really it's, a, it's really true. weird <laughs> um uh, one, what did you guys think about the pokey jobs? Because I didn't bother because they, they it's they're... like just a little bit to get extra experience for your team that's in the box, and it they're gone for a long time. Since so like a couple times I sent yeah. out Pokemon, I'm like, oh no, I want them back. <laughs> yeah, I really had an incident where like I really needed this Pokemon. I was off on a job. I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm probably not going to do that again. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I just. It was disappointing to me because Poke, it's basically the replacement for Sun and Moon's Pokepelago, and Pokepelago to me was one of the best features in that game. I liked Pokepelago a lot, mm. especially since it was just owned by that, I can't remember his name, Moon or whatever, and he was the guy who was missing from, like, uh, Lusamin's, like, husband, like, that was yeah. him, and so she's going absolutely nuts She's abusing her children just... emotionally, and he's over here like, hey, let's all play with Pokemon, <laughs> yeah, having no idea what's going life. on. I love that. <laughs> like, one thing that I really liked about it was not only does the stuff you get, like, it's amazing, the rewards you get for it, yeah. but it also, you got a sense of what the Pokemon were doing while they were in the box. You know, there was different things you could do. They could train up their Eevees. They could, uh, you could uh, put eggs in the sauna. You could have them search for stuff. It felt like they were doing something and you saw that you know you could click on the pokemon on the bottom screen and you'd say like oh this pokemon's been eating the berries we've been trying to plant or what there was a lot of character yeah there. i remember that yeah and you're right in the pokemon jobs it's just like we need you to do this job okay you wave them off and you don't see it like even just like a little screen where you could see little things of the pokemon doing the job that they asked would would add a lot to the charm factor of it that I thought thought was missing. Like, the closest thing to the charm factor that I saw was there was this one sketchy job that I saw where it's just like, (laughs) we need Pokemon to do a thing, and it's like written in, like, uppercase and lowercase kind of stuff, and I was like, I am absolutely sending my Pokemon. (laughs) (laughs) But that's, like, the only thing that had even a fraction of the character that Pokepelago had. Mm -hmm. So it it was disappointing for me, for sure. I could see that. I could see that. I think we got off topic talking about the wild area, though, Mm -hmm. because we were talking about that. Um, Again, I hate sounding like a a sourpuss, because this was probably the aspect of the game that I was most excited for, because I I felt like Pokemon's been very streamlined and constricted for a long time. But, you know, I've really wanted an expansive area in Pokemon for a while, and I felt really disappointed by it because it just didn't feel like there was anything to do like you could walk around there were pokemon and you could go to the different stones and check them but it felt like that was it that's why i want to wait for the service to come on because i i want to see how other people being there will you know liven the place up or not Mm -hmm. It, it certainly at the very least will make it more visually interesting i definitely agree because it would be it uh, from what I understand, like, you can walk around and find other trainers walking around in the wild area and, like, interact with them and stuff like that. That will be neat 
once that's online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I still don't think that it will add an awful lot of substance, especially if you're the kind of person who prefers a single player experience anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I I I kind of agree with both of you. I, I agree with Nadia that there's a lot of nooks and crannies to find because I've been trying to hunt down TMs and that means I have to go through every inch of the wild area and see what there is to see. And it, it, it can surprise you with a few places that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Uh, so that, that aspect is nice, but you, you are right, Ted, in that there's very little to actually see or do. Like, they have these guys that you can spend watts at, which you get watts from exploring the dens, and you don't even have to fight the Pokemon. You just explore uh, it, to check it out. They'll give you the watts. You can then spend them on whatever, including uh, the new TRs, uh, yeah. which, um, you know, it's only w one per use, but you get them, you can get them so easily. Uh, just put through a couple wow, uh, uh, of the raid battles and the higher level ones give you like maybe three or four TRs per uh, battle. So, you know, you can easily build them up. It's not a limitation for it to only be one, you know, that you can only use it once. I feel like Game Freak, like this is their real first time doing like such a big open 3D area. And I wonder, one thing I'm very much wondering is what comes next and like, will they just keep adding to this game or will they give us a whole new game? Like, I feel like Sun and Moon was a huge improvement over X and Y because you could tell Game Freak was really getting the hang of the 3DS and they added so much to X and Y. And I just wonder what's going to come next for for Sun, uh, not Sun and Moon, uh, Sword and Shield in that regard. The second generation on each set of hardware is always, always way better, better than the first one. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's, a, it's an odd thing. It definitely feels... Like, it's a tester. Like, I could see them expanding the wild area for the next game and filling it with more things. Because they, they do try. They have that whole Rotom Rally you can do with the the bike, which isn't that exciting or anything. But hey, it's something. And it is really cool to see just a ton of Pokemon wandering around that you can catch. And like, like I'm walking yeah. past and all of a sudden, like, oh, I don't have that one. Oh, oh, wow, there's a Machamp or a Shift Tree. And I'm like, I'm going to catch that so I'm not to trade it. it it's... There is a thrill to wandering in the wild area and seeing those elements, and with the way the, that weather is just constantly changing, it feels worthwhile to just, you know, every so often come back, take a look at what's available, see what the new uh, raid battles are, check them out, and go from there. Um, but I believe, uh, but it, it's also one of those things, if you don't care about it, it's not going to do anything for you. <laughs> The thing about it is that, yes, there are new Pokemon to find whenever the weather changes, but the novelty, I guess, wears off quick, I guess, is the is the big thing to me. Because, okay, it's like, oh, there's that new Pokemon, but once you catch that new Pokemon, it feels like all of the Pokemon in that area for the time are just that one Pokemon. I spent a couple hours wandering around in the wild area, and I never saw the weather change in the area that I was currently in on mm -hmm. me like i was never in one specific area and had it go from sunny to cloudy or from rain to fog or something like that i had plenty of times you know where i would go in a straight line and then suddenly go from rain to snowstorm to blizzard to sandstorm to bright sun <laughs> within a matter of 30 seconds because the way that the game sections off weather events is very strange. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, and but, it's the wild area, so you never know. What you're it is wild. Let's wild just hand wave it away. I expected more. I guess is the thing. Well, is there any other non-spoiler thoughts you want to you guys want to give before we uh, move on to our spoiler discussion? I guess not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was waiting for someone else to go yeah. first. Yeah, go ahead, Nadia. Uh, yeah, overall, like I, I understand the criticisms. I really do. But um, like I said earlier, it's not like I was sitting there saying. I hate this. I, mm. I'm really not happy with this game. I was just, like, really enjoying myself for reasons, I guess, I can get into more in the spoilery uh, podcast. Uh, I think the story really picked up at points, and uh, some of the characters were really amusing. I really like collecting trading cards from the characters. I think that yes, was a lot I, of fun. I do want to mention that when we get to the spoiler bit, but, the, yeah, but those yeah, cards, exactly. actually, I did really enjoy. Yeah, so I am looking forward to, to seeing what the... Uh, what the servers add to the experience and I mean don't get me wrong like I'm not like oh my god This is the next Dragon Quest 11s like obviously it's not it's it's Pokemon. It's fine. Please it's good by Dragon Quest 11s <laughs> uh, Well here like we're putting together like a the best uh, games of the decade list at US gamer uh, like everyone else in the world I suppose yeah, and it's like as much as I love Pokemon and like 
not just like this Pokemon, but like all Pokemon. And yet it's not the kind of game that I would say, okay, th that has to be on the list. It's just there, it's very comfortable. It, it's, you know, I do wonder like, okay, will, will Game Freak ever break out of the mold? Probably not. I mean, they're some of the most conservative games uh, game developers out yeah, there. Yeah, they're in a very difficult position too because you have such a an engaged competitive scene. And of course we know now how like, rabid the fans can get about certain changes or, or not changes to to the formula so yeah, yeah i feel like i also i don't envy them because i also feel like no matter what they do in their next game people aren't going to be happy because exactly I've, yeah like if they make a game that's wildly different the people who didn't want pokemon to change are going to be upset and if yeah. they make a game that's very similar to this, the people who wanted Pokemon to change, they're not, they're in a lose-lose situation, and I don't envy that situation at all. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, there's been a lot of outrage about different things, you know. Like, I, I will say that I didn't miss having every Pokemon no. in the game. Like, the selection no, I of really Pokemon didn't. is varied quite a lot, so I didn't not having the full decks is to me like the least of this game's problems mm. so yeah i, I um, can't say i missed it ever no it, it's um, a very even spread amongst all the generations as well it is yeah yeah i will say um because this is just the spoiler free section it's not like i hated my experience or anything because i know i have been fairly negative um i i just i felt kind of detached and bored throughout the most of it the only part that really got me, like, upset was the ending story bits, which obviously are spoiler-focused, but, so we'll talk about that in the next part, but for the most part, like, you know, it was okay, like, it, it's Pokemon, so, <laughs> and it, the game, yeah. it's not like the game is lacking in polish, so ultimately it's not terrible, it's just you can do much better where i come down on it is that it is a solid game and it all depends on what you want to get out of it exactly if you're more a casual player you might not find as much because you know, like i didn't uh, like i was excited at first and it kind of dropped off a bit as i saw more and realized it didn't have a lot to offer but if you're a competitive player a lot of the changes could really excite you this could end up your favorite um like i i think opinions are really going to be all over the place depending on what a yep. per each person wants out of this game and uh, you just have to sort of take a look at what you're seeing and what you're hearing and whether that appeals to you or not and go from there because this is just naturally going to be a device, divisive game. I think even if it wasn't uh, for the, all the different controversies that are going on with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that covers it for our spoiler-free Sword and Shield discussion, so thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And Nadia, where can, where can they find you at? Oh, I am at usgamer.net, and I'm also on the Axe of the Blood God RPG podcast with uh, our editor-in-chief, uh, Kat Bailey. Uh, we talk about RPGs, new, old, eastern, western. Uh, we have an episode that goes up every Monday, so please tune in. Mm, definitely check that out. That's a, that's a fun one. And uh, Ted, where can they find you at? So I am a member of Brain Scratch Commentaries. We do a bunch of different video game playthroughs that I think are pretty fun, so you should check them out if you ever get the chance. Very cool. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on Pokemon, including our spoiler-filled post-review discussion and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye.